In this sermon, we discuss simple practical areas where we can help nurture and disciple new believers in their faith in the Lord Jesus. Let's rise to our feet and make our declaration this morning. Man, so if you brought your Bible high up, uh, hold it high up in the air, please. Let's make our declaration this morning. We're saying it because we believe it. Let's say this together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Please turn around to people around you. Say hi. Give them a high five. Give them a nice smile. Give them your name. And you may be seated, please. All right, some of you may have received the email about uh, the plans that are underway for the church land. So we've got a team of five uh, business people, professionals who have volunteered. They volunteered their time. Uh, they're going to help us uh, in, in you know, just the whole process of uh, uh, looking for land and getting a land for our church to be the first facility. Uh, so you, some of you may receive the uh, email. So what we want to do is we want you to pray for that team, right? So, so who, who are all on the team? Doesn't matter. Just pray for the, the mighty five, <laughs> whatever you want to call, right? Just pray for these five. Of course, there's a bigger team that's also part of the whole process, uh, but the five people will be leading it, and then uh, you know, the others will be also involved. Uh, but just pray for the whole process that God, you guide us, you give us, and God, things which eyes haven't seen, which ears haven't heard. It has in the heart of man. We want such kinds of things. Amen. And God is able to do exceedingly abundantly by all that we can ask or think. So you pray like that. God, give us a great place in the city of Bangalore. Position us. Put us in the right place uh, so that we can have uh, at least the first facility, have a good facility, uh, house everything. Now, uh, regardless of where we find the land, the other locations will continue, right? So don't get scared. APC Central will still be there. You know, the locations will continue. We just depend on, depending on where the land is going to be, where we're going to have to go, uh, that location may be moved to the nearest, the nearest one will go there. Uh, so, so we don't want to disturb uh, what is already happening around the city and it's intentional that we have five locations uh, and, uh, because, you know, it's so difficult to travel across the city. So don't worry, the locations won't disappear. Just depending on where the land is going to be, that location closest to it will start using that facility. And, and of course, every one of us will uh, be able to use it. But just pray for the team. The reason I'm making mention is to pray for these people uh, who are you know, going through the process and helping us with it. Right. We've been uh, spending the last several weeks talking about lifestyle evangelism. And I'm excited to see what people are doing last Sunday, right after church service. A lot of a group, I don't know how many of them, from East, they went into the mall. Say that we're going to go evangelize. They stopped people, started sharing the gospel. Our uh, in South, Pastor Jake has been sharing what's happening there. They've been going out on the streets sharing the gospel. Now this is really exciting. Amen. Malayshuram, the hard part. We've broken out. We've taken steps out. I met this pastor. I met with this person, and he was surprised. He said, "I've been in Malayshuram. I think he was saying, I don't know, I didn't forget the exact number, but like 40 years. It's an elderly couple." For the first time, I saw a handbill on my gate saying prayer service. First time. 40 years he's been there. So he was very surprised. Like, so you called and what is going on? And why are you doing it, etc., etc. And so I shared. So we want to reach people for Jesus Christ. We're coming here to do it. You know? So anyway, so we, in every part of our city, even in the darkest parts of our city, that's where you and I need to be. Amen? 
Go to those places, share Jesus. And uh, so we've been uh, talking about lifestyle evangelism and make it part of our lifestyle. Don't be afraid. Just let it be natural, normal. I just want to quickly review some of the things we've talked about. In part one of the series, we talked about the necessity, the urgency. Why is there a need and why do we need to do it now? You know, don't do it after retirement, Lord. You know. So now I uh, need you and I uh, need to start sharing the gospel. You and I need to share Jesus now and not just put it off for some time in the future. Secondly, we talked about overcoming inhibitions. You and I have inhibitions. Uh, that's just normal that we are held back. We, we feel afraid. We feel shy. We don't know how to start a conversation. We don't know what to say. All those things. But you and I can break past those inhibitions. And we talked about that, how we could uh, uh, be free so that we could share Jesus Christ with people. Number three, we talked about simple strategies. That's last Sunday. Just have personal strategies, simple ways. Uh, uh, prepare. Be prepared. How to share the gospel in five minutes. Right? So, if you have a chance, you're sitting next to somebody, and you only have five minutes, you should be able to share the gospel. In five minutes. Right? Sometimes you may have only three minutes. But those three minutes could change his eternity. So you need to be prepared. How can I share the gospel? Five minutes, three minutes. Have some personal stories ready. Share your entire life story in three minutes. <laughs> in three minutes. This is what Jesus did for me. But be ready to share that. And sometimes you may have more time, but you know, be prepared for the short version. These are things you need to think through. Be ready. Uh, 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 and these are simple strategies. I have, I have a way to start conversations with people. Simple ways to start, like, how are you doing? Or, you know, do you go to church? Or have you ever been to church? You know, simple, simple questions to get things started, right? And also carry some things with you all the time. You know, carry a few copies of uh, Experience Change booklet. We have those outside. A few copies of, uh, you know, we have New Testaments available. Uh, some of our books like Don't Lose Hope or God is a Good God. It's very simple that even a person who's never been to church can read and understand. Carry those things with you uh, in your bag or somewhere where you can reach out. So that when you get a chance to talk to somebody, if they are interested, you can share something with them. And then carry on the conversation. Or the conversation may end there, but they have something to read and get to know a little bit more. So do that. And ask God for divine opportunities. Ask him. Say, God, give me something today. So when you get up in the morning, maybe you're going to college, you're going to school, uh, maybe you're going to go to your workplace or wherever. Say, God, today send somebody. Or maybe you're just, you know, it's Saturday morning and you're going grocery shopping. So you've got your grocery list. Top of the list. God, send somebody. <laughs> then, <laughs> now, God, I, I'm going to do grocery shopping. I'm going to go buy groceries, but send somebody there. Somebody can talk to. You know, and, and you may get just a little opportunity, sow a seed. So, you know, it's not like every time you're going to reap the harvest. Sometimes God may use you to sow the seed. Sometimes God may use you to water a seed somebody else has sown. And sometimes God may use you to reap. Somebody else has sown, somebody else has watered, and you're at the other end to reap. Well and good. So don't worry about... Which part of the process? Just do your, your part. Just do it. Amen? So carry these things with you uh, on, on, on Friday. Just to let you know that I also practice these things. <laughs> Other things, the pastor only tells us all to do it. He doesn't do it. Okay, I'll give you an example. Friday, I had to go to Kuchen for just speak somewhere. Um, so finish that. Coming out there. So I was just praying, God, I need some, I need some opportunity. I need, please set, give me some divine setup. Set something up, Lord. Uh, so I was checking out at the hotel. Uh, the, the guy was very kind to me. He was doing everything. Checked out. I just felt, you know, I should give him a book. Give him Experience Change book. The Power to Change version. Right? So he finished everything. I saw his name. Bashir or something was there. I said, hi Bashir, thank you so much, man. I'm sure you'll enjoy reading this book. <laughs> okay, too. And you'll be surprised his reaction. He looked at it for a few, uh, like a, a, a few seconds maybe. And he said, thank you so much. I love to read these kinds of things. Right? So I never know. We don't know up until that time how God has been preparing or doing. But just that one, you know, just left it with him. I don't know what will happen after that. We don't know. But a little seed that is sown. Then they got into the taxi and I was praying, God, 
I need somebody I can speak English. Malayalam, no way. <laughs> now, on the forward journey, the person I was trying to ask, do you know English, English? No. So, so I couldn't do anything. Two hours in the taxi or a little over an hour. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't talk. So I said, God, I need somebody who can speak English because then I can talk. I can have a conversation. So please. Oh, so glad. You know, this guy was sitting there. He could speak some, you know, he could speak English, broken English, but he could speak. But I could, I saw that he was already having a Christian background, you know, but started a conversation with him. And it was amazing that whole drive back to the airport, he was pouring his heart out and I was able to, you know, minister to him. And at the end of that, prayed with him. You know, and I gave him my number. So next morning, he's calling me back and saying, thank you. Yeah. And I, of course, I, I left him uh, with a part of the experience change book and don't lose hope and just, you know, just... Now, he already had a Christian background, so I don't want to, you know, uh, say too much about it. But, uh, but I felt it was a divine setup because he was at a certain point of need in his life. Though he was from a Christian background. He was in a point of need as, as a human person. And so it was wonderful just to minister into that need. But that's what I want you and I to do. Just ask God. God, give me some divine setup. Set up something for me today. I'm going here. I'm going there. Set something up for me. Be alert. Even if you touch one person, it could mean eternity for him. Aha. Uh -huh. Amen? So let's all get passionate. And just in your normal day, whatever you are doing, ask God for these kinds of opportunities. You know, yes, we can be intentional about it. That is, we can go to the malls. Or we can go out on the streets, which many of you are already doing. But what we also want to encourage is just part of your lifestyle. God set something up, send somebody to me or send me to somebody today. One person, you may have two or three, but even one person one day is, is amazing. Amen? So ask God for those opportunities and he is faithful. He will do it. He will set it up. Don't try to figure out how he will orchestrate. He'll put the right person, the right place, the right time, send you into it. And all you need to do is respond. Now, Today, in this closing message in this series on lifestyle evangelism, we want to talk about nurturing and discipling. That means when you lead somebody to Christ, they express their desire to believe in Jesus, uh, and you've led them into a, a time of decision to follow Jesus Christ. Don't end there. Don't stop there. Don't just abandon them there. You've got to take them a few steps forward so that they're able to make the rest of their journey, you know, uh, uh, in a good way. And this is so important. You know, I can look back to my school days. And again, I'm just saying this as an illustration, as an example, right? Not to uh, boast or anything. When I look back to my school days in Bishop Cotton's, many, many of my peers, some are older, some are younger, many of these students came to faith in Christ. It was just a wonderful thing. And, many, and I was a little more... I don't know what to say, obnoxious in those days. I stop anybody and ask you, have you received Jesus? If not, sit down, I'll tell you. you know, I was like in your face kind of person in those days. Uh, but it was just a wonderful thing. So many people, young boy, people came to Christ. But one good thing we did in those days is to disciple them. We didn't just say, say the prayer and see you in heaven. No. <laughs> We got them to pray, but then we took them through something. And looking back, you can see, many of those people today are actually serving God. They're serving God. I mean, pastoring church, heading ministries, doing things for the God, kingdom of God today. Some of them pastoring and leading ministries in our own city. But it started there in Cotton's. And the important thing was that nurturing that happened after they made their decision for Jesus. So this part, this what we're going to talk about, will be very simple, but it is very important. You don't lead a person to Jesus Christ and just let it go. Now, sometimes you can't do anything because, uh, you know, if you're on a flight or you're, you know, you're in transit, you know, all you may be able to do is pray a prayer with them and then off they go. And you just trust that somebody else will you know, God will send somebody else to help them or you can exchange contact details and be in touch that way.
but as far as possible, please do the things we're going to talk about this morning. Now, let's begin the very basic. You know, when a person is born again, when a person comes into God's family, they are born as babies in Christ. And they need to be fed and nurtured in the faith. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, and all these verses are familiar. For those who, have been, who know the word of God, these are very familiar things. I'm just reminding you. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, as newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So when you're born, you come to know the Lord, you've tasted the Lord, he's good, wonderful. But you're like a newborn baby. And you need the milk of the words to grow. The word of God, interestingly, is compared to milk, is compared to bread, and for spiritual non-vegetarians, it's also compared to meat. Right? Sorry, that's a bad joke. But you know. <laughs> the word of God, milk, bread, and meat. Same word. The Bible, the word of God, milk. Bread, meat. So you feed people with that. They, are, they need it. And with the word, we grow. He says, so that you can grow by it. Verse 2, you can grow thereby. Second Peter 3, 17 and 18. Even for those of us who may be uh, you know, a little bit more uh, mature in our faith, even we need to keep growing. He says, verse 17, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. So he's talking to believers. He says, I don't want you to fall. Don't get caught up in the way of the wicked. Verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's the antidote to falling away? What's the key to being steadfast? It is to keep growing. Grow. How? In what? In grace, character, virtue, Christ-likeness. And in the knowledge, you knowing him, who he is, his word, his truth, knowing. So keep growing. So all of us, growth, spiritual growth is important. And of course, in, there are many other places in the, in, in the New Testament where uh, uh, spiritual life is, compared to, is paralleled by the natural. Like this as you have natural growth, you have also spiritual growth. Right? So I want to just give you four things you and I must do to nurture and disciple new people. Four things. Very simple, we'll, be, we'll close fast. Number one is to teach them God's words. Teach them the word of God. So, for that, first of all, you encourage them to read the word of God. You know, one of the most important things that happened in my life is when one of my friends, again, this was in Bishop Cotton's, after I personally gave my life to Jesus, I was just going to this chapel in the afternoon, you know, because everybody was going. But I think about a month or so later, one of my friends, friends, he was actually a senior, uh, he asked me, Ashish, are you reading the Bible? Oh, I'm supposed to read the Bible. Right? But I'm so glad he asked me that question. Because then after that, I went back and I started reading it. And it was so wonderful. Right? But he asked me a simple question. Are you reading your so just a little encouragement that you can give to somebody saying, hey, here's the Bible. Here's how you read it. And you teach them the word of God. Show them from scripture. So remember, you've got to start with milk. Right? Don't go straight to solid food. So a person who comes to faith in Christ, start with milk. Start with simple things like, who is God? What is salvation? How can you have assurance of salvation? Forgiveness of sins. How to pray how to read the Bible, start with simple things. So we have this book called Foundations, okay? And it has 14 lessons, starting from who is God on, you know, we just build up. And it's available for free on the book table, or you can just go online to our website, and all the lessons are there. You can do it electronically. You can just tell them, hey, go there, listen to each one of those 14 lessons. You, they can listen there, or you can sit with them and take them through it. But use that foundations and help and teach them the word of God. So you've got the resource in your hands. You've got it available. And you just have to use it. With me? 
and then teach them. Talk to them about water baptism. Encourage them to be baptized in water if they haven't yet. Uh, 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 teach, teach them about the Lord's table as believers. Now they're believers. They can partake in it. Just explain to them what it means and how they should partake in it. So just tell them the basic things. Because sometimes people may be new, new and they don't know all these things. The word of God is so important. Acts 20 verse 32, the apostle Paul says this, Brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So the word builds you up. And it brings you into that inheritance that you're able to walk in what God has given to his children, his sons and daughters. So the word is so important. It builds us up. It enables us to walk in our spiritual inheritance. So give people the word. Second, second thing that you and I can do, very simple, is to train them in spiritual disciplines. Train them. Things like prayer. Show them how to pray. Have them with you when you pray. So they will listen. Oh, this is how you pray. Right? Uh, they will follow your example. Have them with you when you pray. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to read the word. Spiritual disciplines, things that they can do uh, uh, about growing in Christ likeness, living a holy life. That's important. So, you know, we've got to be holy. Uh, so, this is what it means to be like Jesus. Would Jesus do that? No. Would Jesus punch that person in the face? No. You know, <laughs> just, just show them. You know, this is how Jesus is. So, we have to be like that. And therefore, we ask Him to help us become like Him. So, Teach them spiritual disciplines. And you know, spiritual discipline, we have, we have to be trained in these things. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. Um, the writer of Hebrews says, uh, he's, he's writing to the believers there. He says, you know, by, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you still need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need a milk and not solid food. He's kind of reprimanding them because they're not maturing, they're not growing up. Uh, verse 13, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Verse 14, but solid food belongs to those who are full age and mature. But how do they become mature? Those who by reason of use, means constant practice. They've, they've been doing this over and over again. By reason of use, they have their senses exercised or they have been trained into this right so there's got to be constant practice there's got to be training to help them grow to help them mature and so you teach them certain disciplines in their spiritual life number three is to connect them with christian fellowship introduce them to other christian friends and now this can happen at home right so you just invite two or three other friends and say hey here's so and so and they kind of you know, spend time in prayer they come home you you pray together you worship together you sing together uh, so anything a life group or it can happen in a coffee shop wherever but just get, connect them to other believers you with me so far let's test what was the first one <laughs> this is the word of god second Third, gosh, this morning I was in South. There was a dead silence when I said, let's test. <laughs> I was like, guys, wake up. <laughs> you know? so, uh, so teach them the word. Uh, teach them spir spiritual disciplines. Train them in spiritual disciplines. Connect them with Christian fellowship. With this life groups. And then if they are able to, bring them to church. Right? Sometimes they may not be able to come. It's okay. Don't pressure them into it. But if they can get them into church, connect them to the bigger community, uh, they get to see other people, uh, and they can grow there. Now, this is so important. Hebrews 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approach. So don't forsake this getting together of believers, right? Uh, it could be the Sunday morning gathering, it could be a small gathering at home, or somewhere else but don't forsake this getting together uh, encourage one another exhort one another why the day is coming so we know the lord is returning and so we need to keep ourselves uh, strong and and one way to do this is by being with other believers uh, and fellowshipping sharing our faith and growing together and the last thing number four is equip them to serve 
So you teach them the word of God, you train them in spiritual disciplines, you connect them to other people, and then equip them to serve. That means encourage them to serve anyway. Now, one very important thing uh, is to help them share Jesus with others. So you take them with you. Let them see you sharing Jesus with other people. They will learn. Oh, this is how I share Jesus. This is how I share the gospel. They have had their own personal experience, so now it's easy for them to share. But they need somebody to just model it once or twice, and then they will be able to do it. This is how you share Jesus. And you... Uh, equip them, you encourage them, show them how to share Jesus. Uh, uh, minister to them the Holy Spirit baptism. We have this every, uh, every, every other month. We do Holy Spirit baptism. So encourage them to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Start praying in tongues and learning to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, encourage them to attend our weekend school. So every month there's a weekend school happening. So encourage them to come to for that. So, you know, in the course of the year or over two years, they can be, you know, trained in various areas, whether it's prayer or intercession or healing or deliverance or other things. They can be trained there. So encourage them to attend weekend schools. Uh, I come to start serving in church. You know, they say, like, what can I do? Very simple. Stand and usher, you know, greet people, smile, connect, or put them to the, you know, the ushering team or setup team. You know, it doesn't take, you don't need a degree to arrange chairs. You, know? you can do it. Just anyone can do it. So, just connect them to any, any, any place in church. Say, hey, you're welcome to serve. You know, there are areas, of course, that need certain skills. And if they're going to be with sound or with, uh, with the PowerPoint and other things. But otherwise, just connect them. Let, get them to serve in any way in church. It starts uh, building this, this whole thing of uh, serving uh, in, in the house of God. Encourage them to participate in outreaches and missions. So when we go on outreaches in the, in the city of Bangalore, whether in campus elevates or catalyst or out in the malls, take them out. Let them, you know, just be exposed to how to, sh how to serve or take them on mission trips. And this is God's desire. Ephesians 4 and verse 12. He has given us these apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists for what purpose? For the equipping of the saints for the work of? Yes. So every saint, every believer has to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. So get them to do something, serve, uh, so that the body of Christ can be equipped. So every believer is a minister. We need to develop that, move them into it. So in closing, just some simple guidelines here. You know, nurture one-on-one. -on -one. That initial period is very important where you spend time with that person one-on-one. -on -one. Now you can do that on the phone. Or you can meet them in person whenever you can. But take personal time with them. You know, that early stage, you need to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Right? They can be a part of a group, but that one-on-one -on -one attention is important, at least during that initial period. Maybe it's three months or some, it may be six months. They, they need that encouragement. So do that one-on-one. -on -one. Take the time, invest into their lives. And then you journey with them till they can walk on their own. You're not going to do this for the rest of their lives. Your goal is to make them able... To stand on their own how they can read the word how they can pray how they can connect with other people and how they can grow uh, so you journey with them once they're able to stand on their own you let them stand on their own you're still around them as a, a friend in the lord and uh, well, uh, you know allow them to walk on their own and pursue god's purposes and number four finally is support them through challenges that they may face especially you know given the context in which we live or when when people come to faith in christ they may first face persecution they may face opposition from their own family members some sometimes you know uh, it may be really hard it may be really tough so they need the support so you stand with them you support them you encourage them uh, as they go through that difficult period when they're you know uh, facing opposition from family or friends so uh, stand with them through that time so that they can be come to a place of personal strength and they can move on so in closing, I just want to say this, you know, all of us can do this, but just make this a lifestyle. Amen? Just make it a lifestyle. You know, some of you may be going for lunch today, and you may go to a restaurant. So say, God, this person who's coming to wait at my table, God, give me a word for this person. At least smile. Start with a smile. Say hello. What's your name? You know, uh, hopefully, you know, you can communicate. Language shouldn't be a problem. But, you know, what if you can reach that person? What if you can just say a word that can change their life? You're going for lunch, but you could still evangelize. You could just reach out to somebody. 
Or you may be going to the mall to shop. God, send, me, send somebody my way. Or during the course of this week, God, send somebody my way. Reach out to them. Amen? Just make it part of your lifestyle. Sharing Jesus with others and discipling those you can are making them strong in their faith. Amen? We're going to close now. We're going to take some time just to pray and close. And um, why don't we just rise up to our feet, please? And I'll we'll just pray together. I just want to pray over us this morning. I want to pray that God will really stir us up. That God will create in us the passion. He will ignite our hearts. Saying, God, I want to just share Jesus. I want to make this my passion. I mean, the Apostle Paul said this, and I know it's, it's, it's pretty strong. He said, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. I mean, like, I'm cursed if I don't preach the gospel. That's pretty strong. But that was his passion. I need to tell people about Jesus. Just where I, wherever I am, wherever I can, to the Jews and to the Greeks, got to preach the gospel. Let me just pray. God, stir us up. Father, we stand before you this morning, God. I just pray for every person here, over everyone here, every one of your children, God. Father, I pray that you'll just break down all reservations, all excuses, all fears, all inhibitions, and, and God, just set us free. Make us bold, make us fearless to talk about Jesus. And Father, I pray that you will empower us with your Holy Spirit. Empower us with boldness, God, to talk about Jesus. Give us a passion. Give us a desire. And Lord, we pray that as we go out and minister, signs, wonders, miracles will accompany us, God. That we will pray for people. And see mighty healings taking place. That through each of our lives, those testimonies will come. The blind eyes will see, deaf ears hear, dumb mouths speak, the lame walk, people healed, delivered, set free. Father, even now, put that grace upon each of us. Empower us, God, by your Spirit to do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Release that grace upon each of us, we pray. And Father, we ask that you will give us over and over and over again divine setups, God. Divine appointments, God. But we know that you actually set up a situation for us to step in and minister to somebody. Let it happen, God, over and over and over again. And Help us to be alert, to recognize those setups, those moments where you've orchestrated for us to bless somebody, to touch somebody. Give all of us those setups, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We bless you, God. Before we close this morning, I want to take a moment to pray with anyone here. That you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You feel that inside you this morning. Oh, maybe you're visiting, maybe you've come a few times, but maybe you've never made a decision personally for Jesus to come into your life, forgive you and change you. If you've never done that, I want to just lead you in a simple prayer. You feel a prompting in your heart that you want to do it this morning. I want to invite you to just please pray with me. If you've never done this in your life, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, if you've never asked Him to forgive you your sins, but this morning you feel like you want to do it, I want to give you an opportunity. Just please pray this with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a new person. And help me follow you. 
the rest of my life. I thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. You prayed this prayer. Could I see your hand, please? You prayed this prayer with me. And this is your first time that you prayed this prayer. If you don't mind, could you raise your hand? Anyone? This morning. You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. So raise your hand up high so we can see it. Anyone here? Up on the balcony? Anybody? Okay. I don't see any hands. Okay. If you prayed this prayer with me this morning, uh, you're shy to raise your hand. That's okay. On the exits, there'll be our, our greeters will be there. They'll be holding a green bag or a red bag. And we have a little card that says decision card. So as you exist, exit. Please tell them, you know, I prayed this prayer this morning. I was a little shy to raise my hand, but can I have that bag, please? And there are resources in that bag that we want to give to you. So if you pray that prayer with me on, the, on your way out at these exits, please meet with our greeters, collect this bag, write your name on the decision card and your number, and we will be in touch with you. Amen? Okay, let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.